Believe in miracles and they will know your feelings. Do miracles exist in our reality, or are they something relegated only to the pages of fairy tales and fantasy? If we must believe in miracles to see them manifest, then are they truly separate from our own actions? How do we invoke a miracle? And can miracles ever truly be such in worlds ruled by an author? There are things beyond human knowledge, infinite webs of connection, action, and reaction that go unseen in our daily lives. It is impossible to truly understand the ways in which one's life experiences have shaped the person that they are. Instead, we will only ever come to know the vast majority of the people we meet by the faces they choose to present to the world. But, if by some miracle, we could be gifted a deeper understanding of those around us, every silent virtue and ugly flaw, would we greet that new person with open arms, or would we cling to the palatable mask we're accustomed to? Welcome to La Duelist. Juri Arisagawa can be called a role model. She's calm, collected, the captain of the fencing club, and a member of Otori's student council. She's the third duelist in the cycle, and is a bit of an odd one out. Juri has no desire to grasp the power for revolution. On top of her utter disinterest in the Rose Bride, Juri never truly loses to Utena. Each time, she is brought down by her own hand. She is a figure with an innate charisma. As put by Shiori, she is unreachable, always above the rest. Not only does this manifest in her positions, but in the way she carries herself as well. No matter what she may be doing, there is an air of dignity about her. Her even-tempered and reserved personality lends itself well to making her a model student that teachers can rely upon. But Juri doesn't necessarily care about these roles, despite the time she invests in them. While she fits well within her chosen niches, it is not because these are her aspirations. Rather, these are roles that she finds safety and stability in acting out. It is impossible to discuss Juri without talking about her sexuality. Juri is a lesbian, and throughout the series, we see how her feelings for Shiori and the pain the girl has put her through have shaped her life. However, what is clear to the audience is very much obscured to almost everyone present within the story. Though prejudice towards her because of her sexuality is never outright shown, Otori is an allegory for a toxic patriarchy, and these systems almost always reject homosexuality especially lesbian relationships, which exclude men entirely. Juri is closeted, to say the least. The locket that she carries a picture of Shiori in hammers this point home. It is always worn under her shirt, only becoming visible in private or in emotionally intense situations in which she cannot help but bear her true self to the world. This theme of repression is everywhere in her character. To hide from a world that would resent her, Juri constructs a facade that is aligned with everything correct and orderly. By making herself out to be a model citizen, she avoids drawing the ire of the powers that be by exposing herself. She believes that this keeps her physically and emotionally safe. No one suspects that she is different. Alongside this, Juri embraces the aesthetics of a jaded and, by her perception, mature persona. She has a tendency to benignly look down on others, believing Utena to be naive and the student council's participation in the dueling games to be a fruitless conquest. However, the distance she puts between herself and her feelings is superficial. In truth, Juri is as ensnared by her past traumas as any other student at Otori. She clings to the pain in her heart, allowing it to control her world. Despite what she might say, Juri never truly gave up on miracles. She battles Utena to prove that they are a fallacy, all the while desperately hoping to be proven wrong. She is her own undoing. Her inability to commit to moving on is the source of her failure. She chooses to continue to see Shiori as naive instead of accepting the malice in her actions. This is the narrative she has constructed from her pain, and it is the material from which she's built her heart. Any deviation from this story causes unspeakable pain. When Juri is forced to confront the truth about Shiori by Ruka, she is unable to continue her duel with Utena. She breaks down entirely, and the arena is cast into a heavy rainfall as the ornate locket around which she has built her melancholic fantasy finally shatters. Juri has lived a lie to protect herself from the true agony of her past. She chose the extended ache of her delusions over the sharp, sudden stab of the truth. The destruction of Juri's world is inevitable. If she ever wishes to make it out of her adolescence and escape the dueling game, she must grapple with the truth until she has completely accepted what Shiori did and why. Only then will Juri be able to move on. She is the heroine of a tragedy, her own tragedy, but she's not the only one and her pain is not special. It cannot define her, lest it continue to drag her down eternally. By the end of the series, Juri has begun to move on. 
She even tells Utena that she'd like to keep a picture of her in her locket instead. While this is a step in the right direction, eventually Jerry must learn how to live on her own. She is talented, hardworking, and beautiful. Though in the moment she is bogged down by her trauma, she will inevitably find her way through the darkness and flourish as a fully realized, self-guided individual. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Ledulist. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and give us a like and a comment down below to let us know. You can also follow us on Twitter, at DigiDreamClub, to stay up to date on our content and know when our next Utena analysis will be out. Thanks again, and have a great day.